So our next speaker is uh, Dr. Saiba, and she's going to be uh, talking about uh, the mix and the mix, simplifying the complicated. Thank you so much for the opportunity. So uh, my topic for today is combining cataract surgery with MIGS and we'll understand uh, over the course of next uh, few slides why that's important. So uh, where is MIGS indicated to begin with? It's very important to understand. These are patients uh, with mild to moderate open angle glaucomas who are anyway going to undergo cataract surgery and are on two or more anti-glaucoma medications with a widely open angle, specifically those who are having trouble with their uh, anti-glaucoma medications uh, from the perspective of side effects or compliance issues, etc. The options available to us in India are uh, bent ab internal needle goniotomy, gonioscopic assisted transluminal trabeculotomy, the eye stent implants, trabectome and Kahoog dual blade. The aim of mixed procedure is to reduce the intraocular pressure or the anti-glaucoma medication burden when combined with phacomalsification for glaucoma patients. And time and again, studies have proved that clinical outcomes compared to FACO alone or FACO with MIGS is much more substantial. So let's look at this case uh, of a young patient who had mild glaucoma with a VFI of 92% and IOP of 16 on four anti-glaucoma medications. Very difficult for him to take the medications because of side effects as well as his busy routine. Now, a few years uh, earlier, we could have only given him the option of TRAB, which is also not free of complications. But now we do have a new surgical technique mix in our surgical armamentarium to offer to him. So he underwent um, a cataract surgery for a developmental cataract followed by the eye stent inject implantation and is doing well. Let's look at another case of a 62-year-old female who underwent phaco trab in one eye and is uh, very aware of the nuances associated with trabeculectomy. So in the other eye, the patient had a mild glaucoma with an IOP of 25, five anti-glaucoma medications and posterior subcapsular cataract. So what would you choose in this patient? Would you do a trab for just a less than 10 millimeters mmHg of drop in this patient with such a mild glaucoma, would you continue the patient on 5 AGMs and just do a cataract surgery? Or are you expecting that the IOP will drop with just the FACO alone? So I prefer combining MIGS in these patients because they are ideal mild to moderate open angle glaucomas who are anyway undergoing FACO emulsification. So this patient underwent a bank procedure which is uh, followed by the cataract surgery. Now, uh, again, another argument could be, does FACO not reduce intraocular pressure? Well, let's remember that it does only to an extent of 1 to 4 millimeters of mercury, and that effect also diminishes over time. And patients who are on maximum medications have no effect of FACO on reducing their IOP post-FACO. Uh, and one must also remember that FACO is a progressive disease if you are subjecting a glaucoma patient to only FACO, there is a 45% chance they will have IOP spikes and they will end up with AGMs higher than what they started preoperatively. So what benefit am I uh, providing the patient by reducing or stopping anti-glaucoma medications? I'm giving them better quality of life. Let's imagine putting uh, drops five times a day for our own cells. It's not easy. Also, 50% of patients are non-compliant to the anti-glaucoma medications. And these are Indian studies. And the main reason cited is forget forgetfulness. So this is how casually our patients take it. And they only present when it is uh, too late for the doctor to uh, intervene. Better 24-hour IOP control, better visual field stability, reduced ocular surface toxicity, all these are advantages that we are offering patients when we are giving them the option of mix. And what do you lose? Well, really nothing because uh, what mix entails over and above the routine cataract surgery is just 15 uh, minutes more of your time. You're using the same FACO incision, the same post-op regimen of drops. You have a shorter, much shorter recovery time. The same uh, complication rate as you would see with FACO alone. And also, you're giving them the advantage of sparing the conjunctiva for any future, future trabeculectomy if required. Well, the overhyped, um, the, uh, the reason that cost 
ओवर हाइप रीजन वाई मिक्स इज नॉट पॉपुलर इज कॉस्ट विच इज कोटेड वेल इवन वाइल यूजिंग ए जी एम्स अ पेशेंट इज यूजिंग सेवन पॉइंट सेवन परसेंट पर एनम इनकम ऑफ द फैमिली जस्ट इन परचेजिंग एंटी ग्लॉकोमा मेडिकेशन एवरी मंथ एंड लेट्स रिमेंबर दिस इज अ रिकारेंट कॉस्ट फॉर द रेस्ट ऑफ दर लाइफ विज अ वी वन टाइम पेमेंट विच इज ऑल्सो वेरी वेल कवर्ड अंडर इंश्योरेंस नाउ so in summary while topical anti glaucoma medications have a favorable safety profile they have only a moderate success in lowering iop and it is dependent on adherence which is as low as 50% so mix has the potential of adequately reducing the intraocular pressure of patients who are undergoing cataract surgery in glaucoma thank you so much thank you very much dr saiba dr saiba can you tell us what is the follow up of these patients like uh, when they get this combined uh, procedure done uh, how long do you think the effectivity of the mix is going to be there i mean like is there rather okay uh, so now the follow up protocol is uh, uh, first post op day one week and then one month and then three months of course uh, unless there is uh, some other problems that you're expecting now this follow up also changes with different techniques of mix you will have to have a more frequent follow up when you're using uh, less sophisticated methods like bang and uh, next comes kdb the eye stent uh, implants are way more sophisticated so that uh, the post post op uh, follow ups and recovery is much faster now as far as the effect of uh, these things are concerned uh, bang is uh, unpopular for having uh, developing pas which is peripheral anterior sinicae very um, soon on in the course of uh, the disease Uh, KDB is a little more sophisticated because it has a cleaner uh, cut of the trabecular meshwork. So again, uh, and I stand of course. Uh, we have published studies of uh, as long as five years of doing uh, well. So, and uh, uh, these patients, uh, are you calling them for your regular glaucoma uh, follow-ups as well? I mean, I'm assuming that is just that one eye which needed the follow-up. Like your uh, the fields and all that. How often would you be doing it? Are you calling the months in three years or two years or what is the so yes? Protocol? So now that protocol doesn't change. Uh, the follow up is decided by the stage of the disease. So the mild uh, as long as this patient has uh, achieved his target IOP, the follow up will remain the same, which is uh, about six months for a, a mild glaucoma patient. Moderate will be three to six months. Advanced will be every three months. Glaucoma is a progressive disease, irrespective. of what intervention the patient has had whether it's strap tube or mix or even if the patient is on agm the follow up regime stays the same according to the stage of the disease good thank you so much thank, thank you, you.